Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with you with a live show of the Speak Your Mind show. As usual, we have a dynamic show tonight, and we have some guests that I'm going to introduce quickly, but we're, we have a, some important information to disseminate to you, the viewing public tonight. So stay tuned, call a friend, tell someone that we're here. We're going to be right in your living room, giving you pertinent information and also liaison on with you and getting your feedback on, on a number of issues. So it's going to be an open show and we're going to have lots of fun here tonight. It's going to be exciting and it's going to be informative. So I'm going to turn the cameras right now on to my guest that I have right here with me. I'm going to ask him to introduce himself. I should just start by telling the viewing audience about yourself. Hi, good evening. Good evening. First of all, thank you very much for having oh, you're us. Most we welcome. really appreciate this. My name is Astrid Wenske. You're most welcome. And I'm here in my capacity uh, as an officer of the BVR Red Cross. Unfortunately, our director, Mrs. Helen Fred, is not able to come on the show tonight. Okay. So she had asked me to take her place for tonight. Mm -hmm. And with me is my colleague, Mr. Mm -hmm. Jason Lyons, who is a Disaster Rich Risk Reduction Manager for the BVI Red Cross. Okay. Well, viewers out there, you, I'm sure you're cognizant of what happened with the Hurricane Andrew. Uh, Matthew. Matthew. Sorry, not Andrew. I am calling him Andrew. And he's he's, he's uh, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the disaster that that uh, that Haiti on the on the western side has has uh, has experienced, and. Uh, of course, the Red Cross is one of those organizations that is there to live up to the, the cause. They, they, worldwide, they, they've been able to go in when other people can't get in and, and, uh, and get relief to needed persons. We've seen some of the damage on, on, uh, on television already, and we know that it's, it's very bad. It's a, it's a lot of water damage, a lot of uh, building damage. Uh, as a matter of fact, one part of the western part was completely cut off from uh, from the other part, and I think some some uh, some American aid has already um, been dispatched. So we know that help is on the way. But of course, from our experience here in the Virgin Islands and dealing with disaster already and and sending aid, we know that sometimes it could be very difficult. And Astrid, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that. With our past experiences with with, with the um, with receiving the, aid, with the uh, with the earthquake. Yeah, well, unfortunately, it was in 2010, 2010 when uh, yes. Haiti was struck by an earthquake, and I believe up to now Haiti has not really yes uh, recovered. Yeah. Definitely not, and it is one of the poorest countries in the world. And at the moment, we have been told that te the death toll is over 800. Over and over 350,000 people in Haiti are actually in need of assistance from everybody in the world. And uh, I know the people in the BVI are very good-hearted people, and they're always helping us. They help all the NGOs, they help the Red Cross uh, with an open heart, open mind, and also very much with uh, open pockets. And uh, we would like to appeal to the wonderful people of the BVI to please keep these poor people in Haiti in their prayers mm -hmm. and assist us in raising funds. We will talk about it a little later how, but um, we have started our, our fundraising projects already for the Red Cross. And we make sure that the funds that are raised are going directly to the affected people. It's not going to be half of it will not be lost in the administration because everything is channeled through the British Red Cross directly to help the people in Haiti. Okay. Jason, you want to add anything? Well, what, I, what I'd like to add is that um, a lot of times we, we don't understand, comprehend the, the severe devastation that occurs. Okay. And um, the pictures and the media do a very good job sometimes of explaining or showing what's happening in a country. And um, sometimes it can be a lot worse than what you actually see through the video you know you might see the, the, the houses lost and so on but there are a lot of impacts for instance the health impact afterwards the the social impact the the trauma of dealing with this sort of a situation sometimes we don't pay a lot of attention to you know the mental uh, condition of the persons on the ground so apart from just you know, looking at the, the physical damage 
sometimes we have to think about all the other impacts a disaster of this nature can have on people and the Red Cross has programs that deal with all of these things. We, we, we try to approach dealing with disasters on a holistic basis. So it's not just uh, dealing with getting people back in homes and getting people food to eat and water to drink, but actually getting them back in the right mind, so to speak. Yeah. So we're looking to, to deal with that as well. And as Astrid mentioned, we're going to be talking about how we want the BVI community to go forward and assist countries like that. And more, not more importantly, but very important as well, is to how we can build our resilience so that if we are affected by some sort of a similar disaster, or similar hazard, sorry, we can be resilient and bounce back and, and know how to deal with these things from a BVI perspective as well. Okay, I know transportation is usually a, a challenge in these type of situations, and I, I think um, uh, Rotary, when they were assisting with the with the um, with the earthquake, uh, we, we, there were some challenges of, of of providing small bills because of mm -hmm. the fact that the transportation was different. Mm -hmm. They had to go into uh, Santo Domingo and then cross and over, over to yeah. go into Haiti. So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the logistics is always an issue. Is always uh, an issue as well. So, uh, yeah, and you and you find that apart from the the, the, the there's a lot, a lot of details um, that we tend to look over. Um, I've been fortunate or unfortunate or fortunate to be in disaster situations okay. across the Caribbean, across the world, okay. and a lot of times it takes little initiatives to create big impact, you know? Little initiatives create big impact. Mm -hmm. So it's not the, um, the grand big donors around the world that need to come forward. And, and, and it, it has, a lot of this, these efforts are not so necessary as much as groups of persons, small groups of persons coming together and saying, hey, we want to help, you know? Okay. And getting work done, whether it be on the ground or from another country, but teaming efforts together to build a, a grander response in that in that territory. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, we, 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 it's an open show, and mm -hmm. we're going to put the numbers up there as well so that you can interact with us. Uh, the numbers are up there, 3001949 if you're going to call, and 3001950 if you're going to text. We want your input as well, and we would also want your support. At some point, we're going to expand on, it, on mm -hmm. that a bit yes. more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. And some other things that the Red Cross are involved with, you want to? Yes. Uh, one thing we are extremely proud uh, of that mm -hmm. this year is actually our 60th, 60th. anniversary. Yes, right. And we, we started talking about yes. that, right? Yeah, we started talking about that last okay. week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're celebrating okay. it under the theme celebrating 60, year, 60 years of volunteer-led work in the British Virgin Islands. And uh, we have started off with a wonderful Valentine, romance Valentine uh, uh, evening at mm -hmm. His Excellency the Governor in February. Okay. Okay. We have something great coming up actually this month and I'd like to invite you all to please come out and support, support mm -hmm. the Red Cross and at the same time you will also support our project and fundraisers for IT. Um, on the 30th of October at the Red Cross headquarters, it will be completely changed. You will be surprised when you see it. Mm -hmm. And we have a very special tea party. It being our 60th anniversary, we are calling it a tea party of the 60s. So we invite our guests and all of our members as well to come dressed up like in the 60s. Mm -hmm. We also have a car raffle going on. We raffle a Nix Nissan X-Trail. There is a car. I didn't even know. Okay. <gasps> How perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's our car. It's only $25 for... It's only $25 uh, for the... Um, for per ticket. And we still have a good amount of tickets on sale. And I'm sure you would love this beautiful red and white vehicle to drive. Um, I have just received a message. This has just, that's just been a change. It will be at the O'Neill, J.R. O'Neill Botanical Garden, the tea party. 
Apparently, we have sold a lot of tickets, so we have outgrown <laughs> the Red Cross <laughs> headquarters. Mm -hmm. We will also have a little f fashion show and a hat show. Mm -hmm. So if you come to be with us, please come dressed up in the 60s, come and with your, with your fancy hats. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also do an anniversary booklet uh, celebrating our 60th anniversary and we like to invite businesses of the BVI to please place an ad. The ads are very inexpensive. Just put a little ad with some good wishes or your business advertising, whatever you like, into our anniversary booklet and that's going to be a part of the BVI history, not only for the BVI Red Cross but our history in general. Mm -hmm. That's, that's and, great. Uh, I have a call. Call what saying. Good. good evening. You're really speaking mind. Go right ahead, please. Yes, Courtney, good night. Good night. Many of the people who live with you. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, can you remember what year that earthquake should be? 2010. 2010. 2010, yes. yeah. Okay. And a lot of donations went there. And I'm just wondering if those Poor, poor class that, you know, just will live in those shanty and things. If when they get the thing from Red Cross or other people who don't need stuff, if, um, if those poor class people get in those stuff, because from 2010, you have so many of them living in shanty tent, yeah. and people from all over the world, I guess, donate money. Money goes there. Red Cross sometimes will do the same. And those people are still living in those shanty. So I'm just wondering if the money like goes to, to those poor so people. I'd like to answer. You know? Okay. I and I, I think and I think that's why some people probably don't want to send money there. Mm -hmm. I I I can, I can just remind you though that Haiti have somewhere around thirteen million people. Yeah. So yes, you're, mm -hmm. you see, you're talking about a large population. But I'm gonna let Jason yeah. Answer. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was coming tonight and I was like thinking, you know, boy, I want this question to come, mm -hmm. and I'm happy that is the first question that comes. Mm -hmm. And to address it, now there's been a lot of stuff floating around the media as well regarding the work the American Red Cross has been doing mm -hmm. in Haiti, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of millions of dollars that went there. And somebody said, I think the, the, there's an article that says only six houses were built out of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, let me try to explain what happens wh when monies go into a community for disaster response or disaster relief. The, the Red Cross especially is known for having the lowest amount of administrative oh. costs going into to, to our community when work is done. And the, the work that we do, and that's why I tried to mention it earlier on, is not just, you're not just going to build houses, we're not going to build homes. There's a lot of other stuff that has to happen. For instance, now, and it even it ties into what we're doing here in the BVI. You have, firstly, to deal with, the, on a general perspective, you need to look at what the, the country itself, administratively, is where it's at. Uh, mm -hmm. Does the country have uh, a, a proper water supply system? Does the country have uh, a proper feeding system? Does the country have a proper road network, right, to get to the areas that are inaccessible? So a lot of times, sometimes, you find the work that the Red Cross do, especially the work that Red Cross do, is targeted directly towards the, the, the community. So it may not be too necessary to homes and stuff like that, but it might be directly towards a community, right? Second, okay. second, secondly, secondly, um, I will agree with you that internationally um, you find that there are persons that are dishonest anywhere you go in any, any, any arena you go in and persons do try to steal internationally. To say that that happens with the Red Cross, I do not know. I cannot say it happens. However, the, when, you, when, you, when you send money to, a, a, for instance in Haiti's case, a lot of the programs, and, and it's expected that we try to see tangible results. We should try to see buildings or homes or actual tangible things, tangible products. And a lot of the times, the effort isn't targeted to, towards that or somebody else is working on that. So we're not going to pump monies into 
你你你你你你 structures and so on. Right. 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 So if we go into Haiti, which is the case in what happened with the American Red Cross when they went in there, and, and the Red Cross money, we provided water for everybody. As you may have known, there was a big cholera situation in yes. Haiti after 2010. Yeah, I remember. Right. So a lot of the monies went into what providing clean water, right? So, so 10 years or, or you know, five years afterwards, you would not see the millions of dollars that was pumped into in actual housing. But you will know that people, a lot of persons that after this, the, uh, the earthquake survived. They had water to drink. How did they get that water to drink when there was no water before? You know? Okay, I'm going to listen to you. Okay, okay no problem. Have a good night now. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Th thanks for calling. For call. So it's, okay. thank you. So it's things like that. You know, you, you, the, the tangible results that we expect to see sometimes are not necessarily in the form that we're looking for, but they're there. Mm -hmm. People survive and you give them water to drink, give them food to drink, to mm -hmm. eat, sorry. Yeah. And sometimes we don't think about these things. But they're, they're going, the monies are used in other ways um, and not necessarily for building homes. And I do agree that homes need to be built as well, right? Uh, but there's a number of issues with building homes, a of number course. of issues. Who owns the land? Um, who's going to, who the house is going to? When it's finished. What standard are you going to build exactly. homes to? Exactly. Uh, what building code are you going to use? Exactly. So a lot of there are a lot of a issues, lot of issues. When, it, when it comes to building. If you can't only you cannot build just houses like that. Right. You know that's why we have those shelter boxes. It's actually a big project uh, mm -hmm. initiated by Rotary. They sell those shelter boxes around the world for a thousand dollar per per box. Mm -hmm. I have seen those boxes. They are fantastic how they are equipped. Yeah. It's like a really little home at the thousand dollars or thousand five hundred dollars. So ten donations of thousand dollars could buy ten, ten for ten families a shelter. Yeah. It will not build a house, but it can give them a shelter and a home. The tragic thing is that many of those, thousands of those, have been destroyed, mm -hmm. where people were able to live for the last six years since the earthquake. Yeah. So they are all gone. And I saw something on on. BVI News today, which is really hurting my stomach. I saw two young men um, carrying a casket on their shoulder, like a very simple old mm -hmm. casket. Mm -hmm. I mean, this image, yes. yeah, to know that the p these people have lost everything, and then mm -hmm. they have to pick up their loved ones and, 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 move, and them. move them around between everybody else. Yeah. The situation is really very tragic. I mean, we mm -hmm. had problems also, it was not only Haiti, it was also the Bahamas yes. who, were, who were really, really hurt very much. But in Haiti, the situation is so hard and so difficult because it's, it's one of the poorest countries in the world. And not to belabor the point, but just touching back on the housing system in, in, in Haiti, uh, the, the Caribbean referred to it as squatting. Um, some other pl places, and we sup the the right word, the right term for it is um, unregulated um, residences, right? Um, and you may not know, some persons may not know, but in Haiti, that is the, one of the main means of living. You build, you basically squat, right? Yeah. Now, how do you build a house on squatted property? Mm -hmm. And that's an, another issue that we don't look at in a regular You say, oh yeah, there's a number of, you know, shit tin sheet houses here and so on. We need to build back homes for them. Mm -hmm. But who does the property belong to? Would an agency like the Red Cross go in and build a house on somebody else's property? They're building, you know, for someone else. Yeah. So you know, we have to we have to look at these things. And these are issues, real yeah. issues that come up when um, you're going to implement projects mm -hmm. in communities. The land ownership, the um, provi providing of the title. A lot of persons might own the land. The grandfather. The great great grandfather give it to their father and that other stuff, but they have no proof that the property belongs to them. Mm -hmm. So how do you go ahead and build a property, build on that property, mm -hmm. legally, mm -hmm. as an organization, mm -hmm. when there is no proof that the property actually belongs to Astrid, you know? Okay. Yeah. And yes. even if they had proof at one time, it mm -hmm. might have all been washed off already in 2010 mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the earthquake, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's very hard. Yeah. Documents have just been. 
um, number of challenges <laughs> missing in yeah. us. Yes, it's, ladies it's and gentlemen, it's a live show. The numbers are up there, 3001949 if you're going to call, and 3001950 if you're going to text. So we want your interaction. We want you to interact with us as well. One of the, one of the challenges in, in, uh, in Haiti as well is the fact that a lot of the land, the trees are, are, mm, are, are mm. gone. Right. And it, it allows for mm -hmm. a larger amount of runoff. Off, exactly. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that, is a, that is a challenge, I guess, for reforestation yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. That's the biggest problem because that they needed to cut down the trees to, for, for the, for the to get charcoal. holes to get and charcoal. get charcoal done mm -hmm. and so. Today. And now the mm -hmm. erosion is and unbelievable. The erosion is, the mm -hmm. erosion is, is very high. When we saw the um, Matthew was heading towards Haiti, yeah. And, 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 and I'm going to say this loosely, but thankfully it didn't give a c complete direct impact mm -hmm. because even closer to the border with uh, Santo Domingo, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, with Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. you have a lot more de deforestation, yes. right? And you would have a lot more runoff and flooding and so on, and mudslides and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and so even projects like this, I know that the Red Cross embarked on a reforestation and education process mm -hmm. which takes money yes. you know and educating per exactly mm -hmm. educating person as to what to do and mm -hmm. what not to do in terms of planting trees and what type of trees to plant and getting buying trees for people and that sort of a thing yeah. so it's a lot of different ways you can target and try to build resilience in a community and it's mm -hmm. it, and Haiti generally speaking has a lot of issues yeah. to deal with well, guys, we're having so much fun, but you know these sponsors <laughs> that make the show yes, possible? Yes, yes, yes. We're going to have to take a break, and we're going to be right back with you. Okay. Who are you going to tell me about them stupid directions when the map is right here? Let me see the map. Let me oh, see the map. So now you want to see the map. Give me the map, man. All right. No, we passed there, sorry. Oh. Make a right. Go meters, and that's the destination. Having Digicel data is like having the fastest man in the world save you from getting lost. Start using Digicel data today. Digicel. Welcome to our newly renovated Botanic Service Station to serve you better and faster. We carry Sol Gasoline, the best gas that will take you further and keep your engine running cleaner. To make that delicious meal at home or restaurant, we have LPGs from 20 pounds to 100 pounds, readily available for your easy pickup right here at Botanic Station. While you are here, check out our deli for finger licking snacks from pizzas, hot wings, patties, cakes, all made fresh every day. And cold drinks that's always cold. Need oil for your vehicle? We carry a wide selection of vehicle maintenance products. We are open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. Thank you, Yellow Pages, for our Family Support Network for your generosity and your, and your donation towards our cause. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. On behalf of Global Directories, the parent company of Yellow Pages BVI, we wish students, parents, and our educators in the Virgin Islands every success in this school year. At Yellow Pages, we care. Thank you, BVI Yellow Pages. Marine Air Conditioning and Refrigeration specialize in servicing and repairing units such as Daycare, Marine Air Tech, Mitsubishi, TGM, York. Any type that you call, we can install. We also work on commercial and residential units in houses, boats, cars, and company buildings. If you even need some cool breeze for your dog house or house table, we would not hesitate. We are always able. No job is too big or too small for Alts Marine Limited. For our home and restaurant customers, we also service and install all your appliances such as ovens, stores, 
stoves, washers, dryers, refrigerators, and freezers, you can contact us at 494-4529 or 340 or email us alsmarine at surfbvi.com. Alsmarine is located in Personal Estate Road, Town Tartola. Alsmarine Limited, your number one choice. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with you after a short break, and I also have some additional guests that I'm going to introduce to you, and we're going to have much more fun than we had before. This is, this is a night of activity I have with me. Let me introduce, right to my left, to my right, and to my more right, I have Delmo and Joggy. I have the district governor nominee for 2018-2019 for the Rotary, uh, and I also have the assistant Governor. Thank you. Four Rotary. Four Rotary. I wouldn't want to <laughs> mix it up, Jogi, <laughs> and make anybody think that I gave you some new position that, <laughs> that, we, that we should be having anyway, but <laughs> we'll we leave that for now. <laughs> Anyways, but um, Rotary is doing good things and big things. And <coughs> by, the, the, um, by the, the level of what we have here tonight, you, you know we're going to get some, some information about what's was collectively happening in the region and in the, and in the, and in the territory. <laughs> well, it's good to be here. Thank you very much for you're having most, us. You're most, welcome. Um, you're most welcome. It's, it's good to be here. Yeah. Rotary continues to do very, very well internationally and in the district. Of course. And here in the BVI, we have um, some very energized clubs mm -hmm. here in Tortola, or three Rotary clubs are uh, doing exceptionally well. In fact, the Rotary Club of Road Town was named Club of the Month. Yeah. from our 83 Rotary Clubs in our district. Right. And um, it is something that we are accustomed of having here. Okay. But um, tonight we wanted to, to talk about, uh, along the same lines as what was being discussed earlier, the sad situation that in, we have in Haiti, in Haiti mm -hmm. um, coming out of the destruction that was um, left by Hurricane Matthew. Mm -hmm. And it's not just Haiti, you know, it's been, it hovered over the Bahamas, it went through there very, very slowly, mm -hmm. and they got the brunt of it, and so they had some devastation there. Our understanding is it's mainly with the roofs and falling mm -hmm. trees and cars and so on. But to a very large extent, indeed, Haiti, the devastation there, it's really, really heart, heartbreaking um, what has happened there. Any news of, uh, at all about Ganavip? I know we, we did a, well, the Rotary Club of Tortola did a project there with a the school um, some we, years back. The Rotary Club of Tortola still yeah. has this school in Ilavish, Ilavish, yeah. Ilavish, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, I think it was in 2009 yeah. that um, we joined forces with, um, what's his name, Jerry Bean, mm -hmm. and we built the Good Samaritan School, which we have continued to support. Okay. Um, yes, we spent quite a few dollars and the BVI community was very helpful and there's a private c foundation that continues to contribute to the upkeep of that school because it is something that we, had s that we have continued so to support over the years. And I, I think we may have even had some um, funding through the foundation for it as well, some mm -hmm. uh, matching grants mm -hmm. for it as well. So yes, and in addition to, to that particular school, we built another um, out of funds that were raised yes. for the earthquake, mm -hmm. um, earthquake relief funds. We built another school there. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, we have pictures to show and uh, there'll be more said about that um, next week, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But um, we have pictures to show that Indeed, there was a school that was donated by the BVI community. Okay. Well, you, you might want to expand a little bit on what, what are the plans going forward now for, you know, for whether we're going to 
make a, a big effort to try yes, to, to try yes. to assist? We we do intend to make a big effort. Um, the BVI Rotary family it has a history of lending support where there is need out there um, throughout the world, not just in the region but throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And um, we do it with the extremely, with, with excellent support from the BVI community. And um, I think we've been able to really make a difference to help persons to get back on their feet, persons in Haiti. When there was the um, Hurricane Katrina, we did a massive fundraising effort there and also supported that effort um, as well. So we're hoping that now we're hoping we did meet, our community did meet, okay. um, and we decided that we indeed want to do something in a meaningful way. So we're planning a telethon uh, next Wednesday evening between 7 and 9 p.m. And uh, um, we're very grateful to JTV who have agreed to make some time available to us. It's going to be hosted by Cromwell, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. I saw him just But he's going to um, be the host for us, and we're going to have several experienced Rotarians who are going to be here to help with that particular to effort, including um, um, Elvis here. We're hoping that we will have some radio stations online as well. We're hoping to have ZBVI online and which is the other one? Um, Z King. Z King. Z King. Z King. We're hoping to have those online Zero. as well. And, yes, and so it's going to be a massive effort. And we know, given the history that we have in the BVI, yes. yeah. that the community is going to support us and support us well. And the family of Rotary will be there with Interact, Rotaract and all that, man in the phones and all that stuff as well. So. Yes, we're going to be set up actually at Maria's. They've okay. kindly agreed to uh, make um, one of their conference rooms available to us. So okay. we're going to have quite a team yes. of persons there um, working the phones. We're even going to have a team of persons calling okay. individuals as well. Um, so all hands are going to be on deck. And in addition to that, we hope to have a bucket brigade. Mm -hmm. that, that was a new name for me. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have a bucket brigade that's going to be out on the, on the streets of Rotown, mm -hmm. soliciting assistance, support, um, on the spot contributions from persons. Um, seemingly, we did that. Not seemingly, we did that in one of our recent uh, fundraisers and it was extremely, extremely successful. I think with the same uh, Haiti um, earthquake relief effort and that was extremely successful. So we're going to have the Sunrise Club of Tortola, they're going to be sort of pulling that particular aspect together. And, um, but the whole, the whole effort, it involves all of the Rotary Clubs Stephen Cooper from the Rotary Club of Tortola, he is kind of leading the charge. And I think, too, he, he has been very, very intimately involved with the project that the club is doing, the ongoing project that we have in Haiti with the school. Okay. And so Haiti is extremely dear to his heart, as it is to the rest of us. And so he is um, one of the lead coordinators mm -hmm. on that. I'm sure Elvis here, uh, A.G. <laughs> Elvis, have some things that he wants to add? Uh -huh. Well, I just wanted to, um, to add on what you started saying about the, the three Rotary Clubs in the BVI, because mm -hmm. um, we do have the Rotary Club Tortola, uh, which was the first club here in 1968, so they'll be shortly celebrating the 50th anniversary. We have the Rotary Club of Rotong, which uh, we are a member of, uh, you caught there myself, and past President John used to be a member of the World Club of Rotown. He has now transferred to Sunrise. And then we have the Rotary Club Sunrise of Rotown. And, but in addition to that, we do have two Rotary Clubs, Rotary Club of Tartola and Rotary Club for Jangola. And uh, down from them, uh, or across from them, you have Interact Club, the younger club. We now have three of them, which is the Interact Club of Rotown, Interact Club of Sea International, and now Interact Club of Virgin Garda, which are the Road Club Tortola and Road Club Sunrise, are the co-sponsors of that club. And of course, we have five earlier clubs. I 
don't think you want me to name them, but I can if you want me to. <laughs> uh, so the, the, the future of Rotary is bright in the British Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a member of uh, District 720. We are amongst the most uh, vibrant and uh, energized club. We do quite a bit. Uh, and because of that, we are now able to manage Rotary at a higher level, at district level, because we just had um, PDG Vance, uh, PDG Mainland Pass, District Governor Vance, yes. as our first um, District Governor from the British Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after him, we now have um, DGN, which stands for District Governor Nominee, Delma, mm -hmm. uh, from the British Virgin Islands. And then we have a number of persons at the district level. Mm -hmm. um, and that is because of all the clubs hard work here in the territory. Mm -hmm. And because we work so hard, it is a community, not only locally, regionally, and also internationally, that benefit from uh, the hard work that we, that we put out. And like uh, DG and Delma said earlier, we, this is only possible and continue to be possible because of the generous contributions we get from all of the corporations, all of the persons here in this territory. We are a very generous community. And uh, countries have had uh, disasters in the past, especially Haiti, and, uh, and they have given uh, quite a bit to help in those situations, and I see it no different at this time. So we're looking forward um, to assisting Haiti, assisting the Bahamas, uh, even Jamaica, who got quite a bit of water, but of course Haiti, um, mm -hmm. who is not only uh, one of the poorest countries in the world, but they need the help. And need. As a matter of fact, I can also say that our DG, which stands for District Governor-Elect, our next District Governor is actually from Lakai, am mm -hmm. I right? Mm -hmm. um, Robert Leger. Uh, he is actually from Haiti, mm -hmm. and, um, and he, is, uh, he is right in the middle of, of, of this disaster. So we've been getting information um, through him from Haiti as to what's going on uh, in Haiti. And we know that the, the toll, unfortunately, is climbing. I think the last toll I saw was about 800. Just uh, under 900. Just under 900 and still climbing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just a serious, serious situation. So I know the people of the BVI, once again, especially the Haitian community here, will open up their hands and their wallets and, um, and, and assist uh, the countries. I would also like to say, I listened to the Red Cross earlier when they spoke about uh, funds not getting to the right people or the aid not getting to them. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons, and I'm not saying that is true, but I've, I've read it in the media, but that's one of the reasons why we, we communicate directly with Rotarians on the ground in those areas. So in Haiti, we have Rotarians. In the Bahamas, we have Rotarians. Mm -hmm. So we deal directly with them. And, they, and whatever uh, assistance we can give, we give it through our sister clubs mm -hmm. in those countries. Mm -hmm. And quite apart from... You might want... <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> cut you off. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I mean, I, I know you, you're going to be taking up that big job with, with all these... Um, countries and, and whatnot, so I, I have to be careful not to, <laughs> not to get in your way, <laughs> so to speak. Oh no, oh no. But I was, just going to, I was just going to add to what Joggy is saying, that, that um, by having Rotary Clubs in the various countries where, where, uh, where Rotary is sending aid, it means that no administrative cost is, is, is born because right. we have the administration already in the country. Mm -hmm. So the funds go directly mm -hmm. to the aid. Right. And in fact, I just saw something today, um, some stats that are put out by, uh, what, is, what is it called? Charity Navigator. Okay. And they have ranked Rotary International Foundation um, as a three-star foundation because, um, because the proceeds mm -hmm. that are raised mm -hmm. really are spent on what they say they're going to spend them on. Very, 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 very little. Very small percentage is spent on administration. Mm -hmm. You know, under 4% is spent on administration. And to go back to this, the current situation that we have, um, and following up on what um, A.G. Elvis was saying, a, a team of very, very, very senior Rotarians, the more, more senior Rotarians in the district, have been put together already to manage and to steer the contributions that come in for the relief of this um, hurricane. And you have on that, 
persons like uh, past Rotary International Director Barry Rasson, the most senior okay. Rotarian we have in the area. PDG yeah. Vance, who is also chair of the Caribbean Partnership, okay. which means that he has the wherewithal to go beyond our district as well and uh, source contributions from persons on an international level, certainly outside of District 7020. And then, as um, Elvis said, we have Robert, who is the incumbent common district governor. He's on that team, and he is on the ground, and he's in the heart of what is going on there, as well as our district governor, the current district governor, Harish, from Jamaica, mm -hmm. and a former district governor who is the honorary treasurer for our district. So um, that team, they're very, very um, experienced. They know their way around, and so they're the ones who are actually leading the charge with respect to the contributions that will be coming in for Haiti, Bahamas, Jamaica, but primarily uh, Haiti. Sounds, sounds like a plan. Yeah, it sounds like a plan. Yeah, and like I, don't a plan. Know, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you remember, Elvis, but when we did the fundraiser in 2010 following the, hurry, the earthquake, um, the community was so generous. The power of love was so strong yes. that when the Rotary family had our festival troupe, you know, we always have an yes. entry in the parade. When we did that, the team was to say thank you yes. to the BVI community. So mm -hmm. that was the theme then mm -hmm. because of the overwhelming support that we had. And I know that it's going to be the same this year because as the earlier speakers said, they haven't even Haiti has not even yet come out That's true. of the situation that was left by the earthquake. And yes. here they are again having to deal with another terrible, terrible situation. So we know that the BVI community is going to help. And you know that you can have confidence in, the ro in Rotary that we are going to make sure that the funds get to where they are needed. So again, we, we are going to be having this telethon on Wednesday, okay. Wednesday evening. That's next Wednesday evening, 7 to 9 p.m., right here on Channel 55, JTV. We'll be live, and we'll be dynamic, and you're going to call in, and you're going to make your contributions, and you're going to, you're going to support, support the, the Haiti relief. And, and, and Courtney, for those persons who who won't be able to call in. Um, as TJ and Delma said, we will have a bucket brigade. Yes. And the Rotarians will have on a rotary shirt. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have, I think it's the red buckets. And we're going to be in town. And we and it's going to be on the main highway, the main street. Yes. And if you have any, no matter what you have, it could be a dollar mm -hmm. or, or 25 cents. Throw it in the bucket because yes. it all adds up. And it, it's going to be a number of us that's going to be on the, on the street. And um, and we're going to have the road across sunrise as DJ and Delmas will be spearheading that uh, part of the of the the fundraiser, and uh, we're asking persons to give generously. No matter what you have in your pocket, uh, you can give it, mm -hmm. and we will put it all together and have a fund, a disaster fund for Haiti, mm -hmm. and uh, have the funds um, disposed to Haiti. We already have. Um, information as to where we can send the funds, who we're going to send it to, and the channels is going through, which is through Rotary, yeah. and the, to the district. And as DJ and Delmas said, there, there is a team together, and that team will be uh, taking care of all, all of this information. Ter terrific. But, but guys, just as uh, we had to, in, in the past, make a, a break for the sponsors that make the show possible, we're going to have to take a short break, and Absolutely. we're going to be right back. Spaghetti in boiling water, add tomatoes, sweet peppers, and onion, and presto, you have spaghetti marinara. Having Digicel data is like having the fastest man in the world save you from last minute dinner dilemmas. Start using Digicel data today. Digicel. The nice thing about the National Bank is that they are actually true to their concept of being a national bank in terms of understanding the needs of all islands. They understood what we needed 
at New Horizon Ferry Services in expanding our offerings to improve shipping across our island. Because we have been in this business now for many years and established a good relationship with the bank, they saw our track record and they understood what we needed to expand our business and together we have formed a great partnership that is helping our business to grow. Paradise means being able to expand our business at the right time. National Bank of the Virgin Islands, the official bank of paradise. Welcome to our newly renovated Botanic Service Station to serve you better and faster. We carry Sol Gasoline, the best gas that will take you further and keep your engine running cleaner. To make that delicious meal at home or restaurant, we have LPGs from 20 pounds to 100 pounds, readily available for your easy pickup right here at Botanic Station. While you are here, check out our deli for finger licking snacks from pizzas, hot wings, patties, cakes, all made fresh every day. And cold drinks that's always cold. Need oil for your vehicle? We carry a wide selection of vehicle maintenance products. We are open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. Oh, you go and tell me about them stupid directions when the map is right here. Let me see the map. Let me oh, see the map. So now you want to see the map. Give me the map, man. All right. No, we passed there, sorry. Oh. Look, all right. Go 100 meters, and that's the destination. Having Digicel data is like having the fastest man in the world save you from getting lost. Start using Digicel data today. Digicel. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with you after a short break. And of course, we were uh, having a little discussion about some of the, the fine tuning of, of, uh, of the disaster relief. So I'm going to let uh, our able DG nominee, Delma, <laughs> going, to, going to continue. <laughs> yes, um, with respect to the team that has been put together, I'd just like to add that this is all being coordinated by a uh, disaster chair, the district disaster chair. Long before the year starts in July, the leadership team is put in place. And this lady, she was put in place, like I said, well before the start of the year. Uh, so Jacqueline Heiliger out of the U.S. Virgin Islands, she heads up okay. the disaster team. And this is her profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know that um, we're going to have uh, a well thought out plan. Great. With respect to this. Yeah, that's great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the numbers are still up there. 3001949 if you're going to call, and 3001950 if you're going to text. It's a live show, and we, 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 we love interaction. So if you're, going to, you know, if you're going to interact with us, go right ahead. Juggy, um, Elvis, Elvis, Assistant Governor Elvis, do you have anything else you want to add? Well, I was just going to say that um, in addition to Jackie, um, who is our district disaster chair, each club in the BVI has a, has a disaster chair also. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, has their own individual uh, disaster chair. So when disasters or situations like this occur, they all get together, which is why we had the uh, emergency meeting on, I think it was Friday, okay. um, just before our inter-club assembly, mm -hmm. and uh, put our heads together to move the, the project that we have forward. And also, um, with, the, with the disaster fundraiser for Haiti, uh, I think uh, DJ and Delma would probably speak more about it. The, the, we have the account for the disaster relief in Scotiabank. Okay. And I think uh, we, we, we're going to organize the mm -hmm. number of the account that you can um, deposit the monies to. And, um, and all the funds will be going to that account, whether it's through credit card or cash or check or whatever, uh, it'll all go to that bank, we already have personnel in place to, um, to organize it and receive uh, your funds. 
so that's something as I think that we we are and, and, and the locations for the disaster of course we're going to be at the main supermarkets like uh, Rotor Wholesale or right away One Mat, uh, Bobby's and, and, and all of those uh, different supermarkets in main areas the main around the banks and, and but we will be in the main main areas collecting uh, money that you may have to give and then the other funds will be deposited in the bank and and process after that. Okay. Sounds like it's going to be a, a opportunity. Yeah, and, yeah, and, 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 and also the not only the Rotarians because mm -hmm. remember the Rotarians are the older bunch of persons. The Rotaractors are going to be there. Oh. Uh, the Interactors will also uh, help us um, collect funds. So it's going to be a it's, it's going to be a Rotary family. We like to say Rotary fam. Mm -hmm. um, initiative, okay. and they're all going to pitch in hey, uh, on, on, on Tartola in, in Virgin God. We're all going to, um, whoever have any contribution to give, we're going to, um, we, we, we're going to uh, organize it and collect it and, 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 and okay. through all of our people. As a matter of fact, might even collect funds from the schools, from the little early, act, uh, early actors. Mm -hmm. And I, I love my early actors. So. Mm -hmm. But there is a wonderful bunch of Rotarians that we have. And we thank them uh, very much for accepting the, the call to solve uh, mm -hmm. as a Rotarian, uh, to solve this territory. And uh, again, we thank the, the, the corporations, the companies, mm -hmm. for their generous contributions that they give uh, in, in, in helping us help our community. I understand there's also going to be some red buckets in Virgin God as well. Oh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Red Brigade. The Red Brigade. The Red, <laughs> the red Brigade. We have a very active youth arm, eh? okay. and uh, the Rotary Club of Virgin God, uh, they are extremely active. In fact, they tied with, I think it might have been a club in Nassau okay. for first mm -hmm. place in the district. And this is a club that's only, what, two and a half years. Okay. And they tied. Uh, like I said, for first place with another club in the district. Mm -hmm. So they are extremely active and they're going to be in Virgin Gorda. And there might be one or two Rotarians there as well because we do have one or two residing over there. So we okay. hope that they will join them. And, you know, we have to say kudos to our youth arm. The club in Virgin Gorda as well as the Rotaract Club here, very, very active, very engaged. Mm -hmm. And just moving off the subject a little bit, mm -hmm. I'd like to mention that we are going to be having the Rotaract District Conference here in 2018. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the honors that is bestowed on the Rotaract District Chair. Mm -hmm who is one of our very own Rotaractors, Javon Reimer. He's a very bright, um, very engaged, very enthusiastic Rotaractor. So he's going to be the equivalent of district governor yes. for Rotaract. Right. He's going to be that person in 2000 and was it 17, 18. Right. And because of that, we're going to be having the district conference here. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very good time for the BVI. It's going to be, it's going to mean a lot of young people, of few hundred youngsters coming in mm -hmm. for this occasion in 2018. And I was bearing in mind, Courtney, and, and, and this, this uh, lends to the fact that we have some real dedicated and committed persons here in this territory when it comes to Rotary. Because remember, Rotary is a voluntary organization. You know about this. You're a past president. Yeah. And we don't get paid to do what we do. But it, it all comes from the heart. And when you have persons like the DRR, the District Road Track Representative, mm -hmm. and you have district governors, they're not paid to do this. Mm -hmm. And they are chosen from among uh, 83, clubs in the 83 clubs in the district yes. in 10 different countries. And when you, when you are able to be named district governor, you have to have been doing something um, for all these years in Rotary. And for Javon, and, and I congratulate him again, to be named DRR, he also, from among a number of other road track clubs yes. in District 70, yeah. 7020, was named um, DRR. So, yeah. uh, like I said earlier, the BVI is not being recognized by the district, well, not now, but uh, uh, even more. A bit more. Yeah, a bit more, mm -hmm. uh, because of the work that we do, not only here in in, 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 in the BVI, but also in District 1720. And the awards we get is it, not a beauty competition, it's not a, a, a race, but, it, but you get awards due to the work 
uh, that you have done, the service, how best have you solved? Who did the most service? Who raised the most funds to help Haiti? Who, who, who built the most schools? Who, who, who helped the most? In mm. other words, so even though you get an award uh, you have on your table, that award was through hard work that your club or you mm -hmm. did. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a gift. Uh, yeah, well, yes, be a gift to the world, but <laughs> it is work, hard work that you do. It's not; ju it doesn't just come. It's something shared by all the members. Mm -hmm. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, and that's why you. And that's why you're, and that, been doing and that's why I, you're I, I could make a small plug for you. on behalf of John, yourself, and myself. We could say we're <laughs> glad that we're glad we're glad that Jovan made it because yes. that that club was sponsored by the Rotary Club of, of Rotown. No. No, no, no. I'm sorry, I got to take I, I, Yeah, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to have to, I'm going to have to support <laughs> DJ and Delma. <laughs> yeah. They, they, were, they were actually Tola. formed before the Rotary Club of Rotown was formed. I think so too. Yeah. The the oh, Rota no, he was an interactor. He was an interactor. Uh, yes, Javon, he, Javon he was an interactor. He, yeah, he, yes, he, he, he was an interactor. Yes, yes, yes. That's yes, what, that's yes, what yes. I was referring to. In fact, several to. past presidents were interactor of that club, and current members were interactors before they yeah, um, before came. Them, right. So yes, <laughs> and the Rotary, the Rotary <laughs> Club of Rotown um, did sponsor, uh, is a sponsoring club of the interact club. Yes, and let me let me just say, if I may, go back to Virgin Gorda for a little bit. Mm -hmm. The presence, the Rotary presence in Virgin Gorda came through the sponsorship of the Rotary, of the Rotaract Club. <coughs> and because that group is so engaged and because they see the benefit that it has been to them, they were the ones who really pushed us mm -hmm. into forming an Interact Club on Virgin oh, Gorda. Yeah. So, you know, again, yeah. kudos to them. Yeah. They are alive and doing well. Okay. Well, we had, we had such a, a great time spreading the news, telling people about next Wednesday, next Wednesday evening, 7 to 9 p.m., Teleton, wrote we're going to be soliciting funds to aid Haiti, the disaster that has happened in Haiti. We, 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 we've been around from introducing the Red Cross and what they're, what they're doing. We've, we've, we've had Rotarians here at at a, at a very high level, I must say. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we've, we've disseminated a, a, a vast amount of information tonight, and I think our viewers out there are well equipped. They, 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 are, they are, they're well equipped, they're, they're aware that Rotary is, you know, is doing something about what has happened to our brothers and sisters in Haiti. And, uh, and we, we're soliciting their, their generosity come next week. Yes. We had a wonderful show. We, we had some interaction uh, and uh, and I think the information is out there. I, I have to give you guys a, an opportunity to say something before we, we finish. So, Jogi, I'll start with you and, and let, let the <laughs> well, I know we are on the, on the day, uh, as Kwame <laughs> will say, or uh, Jamaica will say, we are on the terrain at the clock. So I just want to yeah. say that Rotary uh, has a lot more uh, stories to tell. Uh, yeah. We thank you and John for inviting us here, and we're going to be back because DJ and Delma is here to talk about her plans in, in, for, for her upcoming um, year. So we have a lot of information. So we hope we, we will be back, and we thank you very much for allowing us to be here. Okay. Yes, and um, I would like to say thank you as well. And um, to the community, we, are, we thank you for all that you've done in the past, and we are looking forward to your continued generosity as we try to help our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean, and in particular, Haiti. And uh, we thank you for having us. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we had a, a wonderful show here tonight. We were able to, you know, interact with the wider community from Anigata all the way to Josh Van Dyke. And usually at this time, I say, God bless these Virgin Islands, and we'll see you again next week. Mm -hmm.